So, in Vertigo, they can ask the questions in any way and every way. And my friends, you need to be good. You need to be very good. I know quite a lot of people know some of the management of Vertigo. Vertigo management is usually based on the course. So today, I'm not going to be talking about the management. We need to talk about the course. When you know what causes it, I know most of you know the answers. You are seeing a patient in the AKT. She's a 41-year-old female, and this lady has got headaches. She says, Doctor, I am dizzy. You ask a few more questions. She says, Doctor, I live close. I live on the top floor of the, of the building. It's close to the loft. What are you thinking? This woman has carbon monoxide poisoning. Clincher, headache with vertigo, lives close to the loft. What's causing it is her boiler. Her boiler. So think about it. The commonest symptom of carbon monoxide poisoning is headache. Is 9 over 10. If you see vertigo in um, carbon monoxide poisoning, it's usually 50%. It's 5 over 10. So please, you have to va be vast. You have to know these things at your fingertips. And that's what we call the fingertips experience. Well, let me push you a bit with the fingertips experience. If you see facial nerve palsy and you are seeing vesicular rash, I know all of you know it's Ramsey Hunt syndrome. If you are seeing a foul smelling discharge from the ear, it could be many things. Now, foul smelling discharge from the ear with deafness could be many things. Foul smelling discharge from the ear with deafness in a child between the age of 10 to 20 cannot be many things. It is cholesteatoma, especially if it is not resolving. Let me say it in another, in a different way. Foul smelling discharge with deafness in a patient who is 65 is not cholesteatoma. It is malignant otitis external. I've just succeeded in confusing someone, so I'm going to repeat everything again. Foul smelling discharge can be otitis media. Foul smelling discharge can be a lot of, lot of ear problems. But now I've told you that if this foul smelling discharge is coming with hearing loss, you need to now look at the age. Is the person young, 10 to 20, the answer is cholesteatoma. Is the person 65 year old and it's happening for the first time? That is malignant otitis externa, my friends. Don't mix it up. Don't fail the question. Do you know I'll be very pained if any of you fail the question on malignant otitis externa because that is a simple question. You can't miss it out. It's usually this elderly folk who has never had ear problems. All of a sudden, she's having ear discharge and it's pouring out of the ear. It's foul smelling and she is diabetic. How can you fail it now that I've, I've described a mental picture? And that's why I didn't want to have things on, on the slides. I didn't want you people to be, um, to be looking at the slides and just your attention away from what I'm saying. Just make it very simple for yourself. Diabetes, elderly female, foul smelling discharge, ear infection for a ear problem for the first time, malignant otitis external. Younger patient with similar symptoms, cholesteatoma. By the way, cholesteatoma, the um, what you will see when you look into the ear on otoscopy is that you will see a crust in the attic. If you are seeing a crust in the attic in that young patient, think cholesteatoma. Now, let me move on. Still on. So that, that question, I, I brought it up because cholesteatoma can present with vertigo. Cholesteatoma can present with vertigo. Malignant otitis external may not present with vertigo. It will be very rare to see malignant otitis external presenting with vertigo. And so that's another way to differentiate it, my friends. If you, if you, if you don't know that head movement and vertigo is BPPV, you need to study BPPV this afternoon. If you see a patient says, doctor, anytime I move my head, I start to get dizzy, the world starts to spin, it's BPPV, my friends. How about you are seeing a question, loss of cornea reflex and vertigo, are you still thinking? The answer is acoustic neuroma. There are certain things that you don't need to think about. Loss of cornea reflex, you're trying to take the cotton wool near the eye, the eye is not moving, that's loss of cornea reflex. Acoustic neuroma, cranial nerve 5, by the way, cranial nerve 5, cranial nerve 7 and cranial nerve 8 are the things that the cranial nerves that are affected in acoustic neuroma. You need to know it. Okay, you've seen this patient. The patient says, doctor, yesterday I was playing long tennis. 
I don't know. I I just extended my neck too much, and now I've been having vertigo. The patient is 61. You said you tell the patient, well, if you've extended your neck like that or hyperextended your neck, and uh, what you need to do is rest a few weeks. I'll tell you, I can give you a sick off. Just rest for one or two weeks. It should go away. That's a GMC problem. You are dealing with vesibo basilla ischemia. That patient has a stroke. That is a stroke. You need to send the patient urgently to hospital. Vertigo with ex hyperextension of the neck or with extension of the neck, stroke. Vertigo with extension of the neck, stroke. Is vertigo basilla ischemia. Ischemia of the vesibo basilla artery. Is a stroke, my friends. Again, there are certain things that are too common for anybody to fail. You are hearing fullness in the ear. You don't know it's Meniere's disease. You are hearing oral fullness with tinnitus is Meniere's disease. Any fullness is Meniere's. Fullness, Meniere's. It's just too simple for anybody to fail in this class. Okay, you've got this patient. The patient has been given antibiotics. The patient has some sort of infection. They decided to give gentamicin. What is that? The patient has vertigo due to gentamicin. So that antibiotic that causes vertigo in the exam is gentamicin. It also causes hair loss when we get to hair loss. Again, you have seen a patient. The patient is having blurry vision. Now, I'll slow down a bit. Blurry vision in the AKT with urinary incontinence. Don't think too much. Don't think too much. It can only be one thing in neurology that is multiple sclerosis by the way multiple sclerosis in your exam is very high yield please know all the eye problems in multiple sclerosis multiple sclerosis optic atrophy multiple sclerosis optic neuritis multiple sclerosis internuclear ophthalmoplegia multiple sclerosis autops phenomenon multiple sclerosis lemite sign Multiple sclerosis, bladder problem. Please, please, and please, multiple sclerosis is super high yield. You need to be eating multiple sclerosis like you are eating cake. What do I mean by multiple sclerosis? Autops phenomenon. The patient will say, anytime I go into the sunlight, I start, I, I start to have blurry vision. Anytime you turn the heater in the room, they have blurry vision. It is blurry vision or... Uh, visual problems with increased temperature that is autopsy phenomenon how about a patient that has um, um, optic neuritis it is red desaturation they cannot uh, really identify red color they have problems with that that's that's your classical optic neuritis don't forget a thumb is a cause of optic neuritis cat scratch disease is a cause of optic neuritis syphilis is a cause of optic and that is tertiary syphilis my friends anyways i'm trying not to go too much into other things because ent on its own is a lot so please know multiple sclerosis like the back of your palm be good in it if you look into the patient's eye with your ophthalmoscope you see something shining in the eye it is this optic disc that is shining optic nerve that is optic neuro um, that's um optic atrophy if you see something shiny in the eyes, is the nerve, optic atrophy. That's optic atrophy. By the way, I've explained of internuclear ophthalmoplegia just in the last um, class. Internuclear ophthalmoplegia, both eyes are not connecting. Where else in the AKT do you see internuclear ophthalmoplegia? In a patient abusing alcohol. I told you the easiest way to remember that is quote and rack. Confusion of thermoplegia is the o in quote c o a t confusion of thermoplegia ataxia what you need to do is to give termin that's the meaning of quote confusion of thermoplegia ataxia give termin what is rack rack is retrograde amnesia antigrade amnesia confabulation that patient has got kosakoff's psychosis Okay, let's run away from there you are seeing a patient says doctor i've got vertigo and the patient says, last week, I had an infection. The doctor said it was a viral infection, as viral upper respiratory tract infection. What question do you need to ask? The question you need to ask is, do you have problems with hearing? Did, did you have, do you have hearing loss? Are you kind of deaf? 
if the patient says no doctor i can hear very clearly your answer is vestibular neuronitis if the patient says doctor i can't hear a thing i think my hearing has gone away but it's starting to come back it is labyrinthitis can i take that again viral infection no hearing loss neuritis see the name new n no no hearing loss neuritis vestibular neuritis or neuronitis how about hearing loss look at the name labyrinthitis l loss l loss there is hearing loss how do you feel these things in the exam when they've been spelled out to you very easily you can't feel it and th this question will come as a very lengthy question just in the second line you will see that the patient has not got hearing loss then you know your answer it is never labyrinthitis when there's no hearing loss so please and um, please vertigo can come this way and again when we talk about vertigo you need to know all the tests the kind of test you see in vertigo you can see the alternate cover test you need to know what that is i'm not going to cover it today it's just too much and those are those things are not very necessary but if you know them they make answering your question easier you need to know the head impulse test i need to spend two three minutes to describe it i can't cover it today you need to know the utem uh, utem Beggar's test, there's an Utenbeggar's test, which is not very common, but if you know it, it's good for you. You also need to know the Rombeck's test. The Rombeck's test, I know all of you know that there's something called Rombeck's test, but you may have forgotten. What you need to do today is go and remind yourself of Rombeck's test. Just open the books, spend one or two minutes, see what it is about. It's usually not the question, but it's usually a pathway to understanding and getting the answer to the question. So this is vertigo, my friends. And I think if we want to spend two hours on vertigo, we can, but we've got other things to do. So let's run along. I've tried to make things easy. I brought out the common things. Don't go and start reading things that are not common. How is it that in the exam, they ask simple questions, you fail it, but you know the high falutin things, you know the big things. It is counterproductive. I call it self-harm, my friends. Let's move on. Let's not waste much time. So that's vertigo for you. We have got a patient with ear ache. A patient with ear aches. The patient says, doctor, I'm having ear pain. How do you approach it? You need to be finding out why the patient is having ear pain. You need to ask questions. Is the patient saying, doctor, my ear ache is also coming with swallowing difficulty and a bit of weight loss, nasopharyngeal cancer. Is that Chinese guy that has got dysphagia, he's got ear pain, he's got weight loss. It is nasopharyngeal cancer. At the beginning of this class, I told you I'll be repeating some things. I'm repeating them because I want you to know them. I'm repeating them because they are high yield. I'm repeating them because you cannot say you've done an ENT course in EasyLearn and you don't know how to identify nas nasopharyngeal cancer. It's not possible. And so you have heard it in, in another topic. Now you are hearing it in earache. You hear it in every area that covers that topic. How about a patient? The patient is eight years old. The patient is always itching her ears. You look into the ears, you can see eczema of the ear canal. That's otitis externa, my friends. It can happen in a 40-year-old. It can happen in a 55-year-old. If it happens in a 60-year-old for the first time and she has started discharging foul-smelling dis discharge, that is malignant otitis externa, my friends. Malignant otitis externa, let me repeat that. Elderly female, she's usually diabetic in your AKT, foul-smelling discharge. She may have a bit of fever. What are you waiting for? Malignant otitis externa. Okay, I give you this patient. This patient has difficulty with eating. The patient says, doctor, anytime I open my mouth or I yawn, I get pain. I get serious pain. It's TMJ dysfunction, my friends. Pain on chewing, pain on yawning, TMJ dysfunction. You can't fail it. It's classical. Okay, but they change the question for you. They say, these candidates, they know TMJ dysfunction just too well because it's something they like to play with. They now change the question. They say the patient has um, earache. And the earache comes only when the patient is chewing. There is no yawning here. So forget about the earache. Just think about mouth pain. The patient says, anytime I'm chewing, I have pain. That is dental caries. Dental caries. So 
if it's on chewing and yawning it means that it is related to opening the mouth anytime the patient opens the mouth they have the pain it's cmj dysfunction but if it's just only chewing or eating whenever you open your mouth for any other thing it doesn't happen that cannot be tmj dysfunction it can be something else think dental caries my friend how about facial weakness and vestibular rash again that's ramsing horns ramsing horns is that patient that has a rash around the ears or just at the entrance of the ear canal the patient may have facial weakness that is very visible to you pick ramsing horns move on by the way, there, there, there are a couple of questions in the AKT that have the rule of 72. It means that you need to give them prednisolone in 72 hours. Herpes zoster ophthalmicus is one of them. Herpes zoster orticus is one of them. Bell's palsy. I saw a patient with Bell's palsy yesterday. In fact, I've seen two this week. The first patient says, doctor, I've been told I have Bell's palsy. I took a cyclovir. My question is, when were you given the cyclovir? He said, well, I didn't know about the diagnosis very early. So I took it. I got it six days after the rash came up. Well, findings have shown that if a patient doesn't take um, a cyclovir within the first 72 hours, post-hepatic neuralgia pain is worse. AKT question. Post-hepatic neuralgia pain is worse. In real life, explain to the patient that it could be because of that. The second question I asked the patient is, have you had the vaccine? Both of them said no. Zostavax, my friends. 71 to 79, AKT question, you can't fail it. This is why I don't like to teach arranged. It's a little here, a little there. Imagine I've just concentrated on earache. It will deny you the chance of hearing about shingles vaccine. It will deny you the chance of us talking about shingles for the second or the third time. But you need to hear these things again and again for you to be good, my friends. Zostavax shingles. Zostavax shingles, age 71 to 79, clincher. Okay, so what, what did I give that patient? The patient says, I've taken ibuprofen. I say, yes, that's first line. Says, I'm using paracetamol. I say, yes, that's first line. He says, doctor, they are not working. You can give your neuropathic agents, my friends. Neuropathic agents, if you don't know what I'm talking about, amitriptyline is a treatment for shingles. Gabapentin is a treatment for shingles. Pregabalin is a treatment for shingles. Even duloxetin is on the guidelines for treating shingles. You can add um, naproxen and um, codeine. It's also on the guideline for shingles. So please, these patients are usually in severe pain. Shingles doesn't cross the midline. It is pain classically before rash. Let me not teach shingles today because it's not part of ENT. I just thought you should know. There are some things you come across. For example, I've just, I've just come about, I've, across multiple sclerosis this morning and I just felt like teaching it for, for the next 10 minutes because it's high yield. It's not because I like it. It's because they ask questions on these things on a daily, on a routine. You can't fail them. It will be pay I'll be pained if you fail them because you need to know them at your fingertips. You need to know them really well. Okay, back to earache. We've done a bit of diversion. I'm, I'm sure you've learned a bit from that. You are seeing a patient with fever, foul smelling discharge, mastoiditis, my friend. Earache, fever, foul smelling discharge, mastoiditis. And that's why I said when I talked about foul smelling discharge, some candidates will pick on one thing. They will pick foul smelling discharge and they will choose their answer. Please, please, and um, please, foul smelling discharge can be five things in the AKT. Can be otitis externa. It can be malignant otitis externa. It can be otitis media. It can be mastoiditis, as you have seen. It can be cholesteatoma. You need to see what they have added to it. If they have added elderly and diabetes, you know your answer. If they've added that the child is prone to having this kind of problem, it's glue ear. Why are you wasting time? If they said this patient is between the ages of 10 to 18, yellowish discharge, foul smelling, thin cholesteatoma, especially if you look into the ear, you can see a crust in the attic. These things are simple. You just need to know what we call cliche. What is cliche? Cliche is pattern recognition. The other thing you need to do for yourself is exclude jargons from your life. Don't read um, otitis external for one hour then how, how how do you want to read other things 
It means that ENT, you cover ENT in three months. That's what it means. Spend only three hours or two hours on the whole of ENT and cover it. And that's what we are going to do this morning. It takes you being smart. It takes you being ready to study in a smart way. Smart study is what you need for your AKT, my friends. Okay, you've seen this patient. The patient has got short tongue and difficulty talking. By then, I think you should have already known the answer. But if you are not sure of the answer, the AKT question gives you an additional clincher. They say he's a smoker. This is carcinoma of the tongue. What are you thinking about the answer? It's a 10 second answer. Carcinoma of the tongue is a patient who is a smoker. Carcinoma of the tongue is sudden short tongue that is not going away without explanation. The word is unexplained. Unexplained. Okay, I give you this patient. This patient has got facial paralysis. The patient has got deafness and there's some blood stained ear discharge. It's cancer, my friends. You don't wait until they tell you weight, weight loss and all those things. How will the patient be having one side of the face paralyzed? Then you will now see blood. These are double red flag. Double red flag, please think SCC of the ear. Facial paralysis, deafness, and that deafness will be sudden. So that's a triple red flag. Facial paralysis, sudden deafness, blood stained ear discharge, SCC, that's squamous cell cancer of the ear. Now, I don't want to go into places where you can see squamous cell cancer. I did it two, two weeks ago. It is virtually, you can see 30 places in the body where there can be squamous cell cancer. You need to know how they come. With the bladder, it's, it's hematuria. You need to know how it comes. In the upper chest, you need to know that the upper part, upper um, one third, uh, upper one third is different from the lower two third. You need to know all these things. So you need to be very good when it comes to squamous cell cancers. You need to know everywhere in the body where you can have squamous cell cancers. But that's not our focus for today. If you are seeing a patient with upper respiratory tract infection, tympanic membrane perforation, think otitis media, especially if it's a young child. Otitis media, think um, tympanic membrane perforation if it's having effusion, if, if, it's, if there's serous discharge, otitis media. Okay, so that, that's a bit about earache. And I don't know if, if as I said in the past, if we have two hours, we can keep talking about earache, but it's high yield things that you need to study at this time. By the way, if you do not know, your exam is less than 70 days. It's just about two months around the corner. This is when you need to optimize your game. This is where you need to be studying, not every day, but you need to study fast. You need to study smart. You need to study in a way that you exclude jargons. So this is the difference between two candidates. One candidate is studying, the, is studying 40, 50 pages a day. The other candidate is studying just two pages a day. This candidate studying two pages a day is studying high yield points that have been super streamlined. High yield points that are important for you to be a GP. But the other candidate that is studying 40 pages is studying what I call textbook stuff. You can't do that. My friends, if you don't know what I call it, I will tell you again, that's self-harm. If you are studying textbook stuff that wouldn't come out in your AKT, you are studying textbook stuff that wouldn't come as a presentation in your GP practice, what are you doing to yourself? It's self-harm, my friends. Let's move on to hearing loss. Hearing loss can present in different ways, my friend. And I'm just going to give you 16 different ways in which hearing loss can come out. There, it can come out in 40 different ways, but I've excluded dragons as usual for you. If you've seen a patient, patient presenting with sensory neural hearing loss, it is unilateral. And I just need to call the last thing, oral fullness. I know all of you by now have echoed it into your ears. It's ringing in your brain. It has to be Meniere's disease. It's nothing else in the AKT. Oral fullness, if you, don't, if you read the whole question, the only thing you are looking for is oral fullness. Everything in the question is useless. It's Meniere's. There's nothing else that will cause that oral fullness in ENT. It's Meniere's, my friends. Okay, I give you this patient. This patient has been on an antibiotic. There is no gentamicin in your exam. They are having hearing loss. What do you think? Aminoglycosides. So it's not only gentamicin that can cause hearing loss. 
now that I've said it, someone has gone to write only aminoglycoside and gentamicin will cause hearing loss as medication. No. If the question if the question says the patient has heart failure, the answer is frosimide. Frosimide in high doses causes hearing loss. So you need to be good, my friends. There's a difference between that's why I say some candidates will read and they cannot interpret. This is why this course is here for us to be able to interpret the what you've read, for you to be able to interpret it in the AKT question. Sometimes if I bring a lumpy AKT question here, some of you will get the answer in one minute. Some other people will, will know what it's about, but they'll fail the answer. They have difficulty interpreting. And so we've got different people in this class. Some of you have got interpretation problem. Some of you have got the problem of reading jargons. Some of you have got the problem of reading too fast and you fail the question. And this is why we don't just teach you what you need to know. We teach you how to answer the question. Use clinchers or cliches. Use pattern recognition to get your answers, my friends. So I hearing loss, I give you this patient. This patient has come with neurofibromatosis. It's written in the first line. Don't waste time. The answer is acoustic neuroma, cranial nerve 5, cranial nerve 7, cranial nerve 8. By the way, cranial nerve 7 is facial nerve, cranial nerve 5 is trigeminal. You need to know all the cranial nerves. Which one is trochlear? Oculomoto 3. You need to know what, what happens when there's a defect in the oculomoto nerve. Glossopharyngeal. You need to know all of them. Vagus. You need to know their numbers. You need to know uh, uh, glossopharyngeal, the difference between glossopharyngeal and vagus. You need to know what they do. So my friends, again, that's not the focus of today. S spend 10 minutes, look through all the cranial nerves. You know it before, you just need a bit of revision. Again, another thing that has 10 or 12 lines like that is vitamin B. You need to know vitamin B1, B2, B6, B12, all the vitamin B, B4, B7. Some people don't know that there are other vitamins apart from the popular ones. You need to know all of them. Don't just know pyridoxine. No, no, but no, bounty, no, all of them, all of them, all of them should be known. And no, don't just know them, know the kind of problems they cause. Now we are talking about vitamin deficiency. How will you not know vitamin C discovery? That's what we've been learning since we were young. How will you not know the problems with vi vitamin D? You need to know that in, in AKT, they can bring to you an Asian woman who has vitamin D deficiency. Why? She is Muslim. She's been covering her hair. You need to give her some um, give her some vitamin D based on blood tests. So she needs to have a blood test because you don't just give vitamin D like that, my friends. What of vitamin E? Tocopherol. The patient will always say, doctor, I have got dry skin. You need to know these things, my friends. Anyway, as I've said, that is not the focus. But it's good to do a little here, a little there. Part of why I'm not going deep into it, I could have simply taught you vitamin deficiency now in 10 minutes and continue this. But I need to challenge you. You need to study as well. You can listen to three hours of audio, audio points from my ENT. But if you do not study, it's counterproductive. What these audio points will do for you is that it will make life easy for you. First thing it will do for you, you don't need to go and start reading all the big books. It's been brought out for you. It's been super simplified. It's been streamlined. Second thing it will do for you is that you've heard it for the first time. By the time you are reading it, it flows. That's why if you are doing ENT today and you keep that, you say, oh, in, in October 12th, that's when I'll do my ENT revision. That's not good enough. By the way, your first mock is coming next month and your first mock is covering everything and it's not what we've done. It means that you should have started reading white. It means that you should be good. And I want to beg you, some of you during the first mock, which is a 200 question mock, some of you will get 32. Some of you will get 12 over 200. Don't be discouraged. That's not the time to be discouraged. That's the time to pull up your belt and say, I'm ready to study. I need to study. It is a challenge. It is not a discouraging factor. And that's why I want to beg you, my friends, if you score 64 or 70, don't feel bad. It's just, a it's just the time and it's coming early. It's just that you have time to sit up. We've brought the mocks not to... What some people do is they do mock one week to the exam. 
So you do a mock one week to the exam, you score 33 over 200. What do you now want to do? You want to use one week to become good. How? This is when you need to start doing the mocks. It is now when you need to see your deficiency and know where which areas to touch and which areas not to touch. As I'm going through hearing loss now, some of you are already seeing your deficiencies. I asked a candidate about bilateral sensorineural hearing loss with retinitis pigmentosa. The candidate did not know it's Alport syndrome. Now, let me tell you about Alport. The ways it can come in your exam, you can see bony speckles with renal failure. Bony speckles, by the way, are black spikes on the retina. You do ophthalmoscopy, you see bony speckles with renal failure. It's Alport, my friend. Retinitis pigmentosa. The clincher is bony speckles. So you can see they've I've, I've just I've just said it in two different ways. I've said bony speckles in the AKT with renal failure output. But I've just told you that bony speckles is the classical hallmark of retinitis pigmentosa. It means that there's no retinitis pigmentosa without bony speckles. So I've come in, in a different way to ask you the question. I've said bilateral sensorineural loss with retinitis pigmentosa. The answer is still output. Don't be confused. Some candidates, their problem, they know it, but their problem is they see the question, they become jittery. This is where we flog out jitteriness from your life. We do not need you to be jittery. If you are jittery, you have the chance of failing the AKT. And by the way, if you know that you are still G3 up till now, you have been trying, you are not part of Pass Plus, please join Pass Plus. I beg you. Message Yemi, tell Yemi you want to join Pass Plus or Pass Guarantee if you are still G3. g will be flogged out of you by the time it's time for AKT. You'll be that good because you would have repeated it so many times that you'll be very good. Some of the things we are doing today now, the Pass Plus people have gone through it and they are hearing it for the second time, but they will hear it for the third and fourth and fifth time. How do you now fail the AKT when you've heard something particularly for five times? It's not possible. So you've got this patient. This patient is an old man. He's 81 years old. He's got bone pain and he's having hearing loss. That's Paget's disease, my friend. Anyway, Paget's disease is very high yield in the AKT. Whenever I'm talking about Paget's disease, I would teach hyperparathyroidism, primary and secondary. Whenever I'm talking about Paget's disease, I'll tell you about hypothyroidism. Whenever I'm talking about Paget's disease, I'll tell you about osteo, um, osteoclasts and osteoblasts. Those are the formation of your bone. So Paget's disease is, is something that you need to know. Is In the AKT, it will be an old man with bone pain. Whatever is added to it is what they want you to know. So in this case, old man with bone pain and hearing loss, Paget's disease. Old man and bone pain can be with other things as well. So those will be the clinical features of Paget's disease. Okay, I've, I've, I've seen that some candidates usually have problems with childhood syndromes. Some candidates have problems with childhood infections. Please, we've done it in the um, charity course. Again, we are going to do it in pediatrics. If you see a patient who has deafness, the patient has sore throat and a painful neck gland. Mumps. Mumps. That is mumps, my friend. By the way, that thing is 455. 455. So mumps is 5. Rubella, 5. Don't fail it in the exam. 455 is the acronym. 455 is the acronym. Also, no scarlet fever, school exclusion. Scarlet fever is different. So, in the AKT, all the vir most of the viral ones have no school exclusion. For example, if you see conjunctivitis, there's no school exclusion there. If you see infectious mononucleosis, there's no school exclusion there. All you need to know is avoid contact spots. If you see um, a scarlet fever, you need to know the organism, what organism is causing them. Chicken pox, you need to know which school exclusion it is. Which one is 24 hours after D and V, diarrhea and vomiting. So my friends, childhood syndrome is, is childhood syndrome and childhood infection. Childhood syndrome, by childhood syndrome, I mean things like um, Turner syndrome, things like Edwards, things like, um, um, what's this la lady's name? 
um the one the one with hypercalcemia is williams and the one with um his sister i've just forgotten her name you need to know all of them you need to be that good in the akt so we'll, we'll do that in pediatrics again for people who miss the charity course but in this uh, in this um ent they can ask you about hearing loss and neck swelling hearing loss and neck swelling please think moms that child has moms measles moms rubella measles moms rubella so moms and rubella five measles four okay you see an elderly man in the akt this man the wife is complaining bitterly she says doctor my husband is always turning on the tv loudly i would reduce the volume he would turn it up i will reduce the volume he would turn it up he's pressed by kusis my friend what are you still thinking about old age hearing loss pressed by kusis this is different from noise induced hearing loss in noise induced hearing loss is that patient that has worked in the airport without ear muffs is that patient that doesn't use a ear hearing guard or doesn't use something to cover his ears and has worked in a noisy place it could be in your exam it could be a dj the commonest question you will see relating to a dj is not noise induced hearing loss it is a, a topic called chondrodermatitis nodularis helicis chondrodermatitis nodularis helicis and that what you see there is because they've been wearing ear, ear muffs or they've been wearing things on their ear there's a bit of pressure it starts to form a lump the lump is on the helicase okay now that you know that a, an elderly man who cannot pick up the phone because he will not hear is pressed by kusis how about you see a question lengthy question it's usually a female she has what we call flamingo tinge when you look on otoscopy so otoscopy you look at the eardrum flamingo tinge the clincher there is sometimes not the flamingo tinge is family history my friends, hearing loss with family history, it is autosclerosis until proven otherwise. They said the mom had it, the grandmom had it. First pick autosclerosis, then read the question again to be sure that you picked the correct answer. If they help you in the AKT, they put flamingo tinge, pick autosclerosis, don't look back. Don't look back. That is the confidence okay you've got this patient this patient has got ringing in the ears the patient has facial nerve palsy by now if you have been hearing my facial nerve palsy facial nerve palsy and anything is first acoustic neuroma when you start to read and you see that there are other things then you can change the answer ent question facial nerve palsy with anything is first acoustic neuroma think about it facial nerve palsy can be bell's palsy what is Bell's palsy? Lower motor neuron lesion. Upper spheres, upper, lower spheres, none, my friends. You need to be good. Which one is upper? Stroke. Which one is lower? Bell's palsy. You need to be to be able to differentiate it. What would the patient in Bell's palsy present with? Hyperacusis. They, they cannot do well with high, high frequency sound. What would they present with? One-sided facial weakness. What would they present with inability to wrinkle forehead? Lower spears, none. Lower spears, none. They can't wrinkle their forehead. Meanwhile, upper spears, upper, so they can wrinkle their forehead. And that's why that answer is stroke when they can wrinkle their forehead. Okay, please, please, and um, please, you may see a question. It's a, a patient who is eight years old, is having. Um, um, e um hearing loss with discharge it is otitis media it can be glue ear but the question is when do you refer when do you refer this child please you first need to do an audiometry an audiometry is a hearing test you do an audiometry it shows yes he indeed he has a hearing loss don't refer yet wait 12 weeks repeat an audiometry if after 12 weeks repeat audiometry is still abnormal then you are you are free to refer why glue ear resolves on its own glue ear is that patient who is seated in front of the class and is still not hearing they have hearing difficulty glue ear or otitis media is that patient that is not doing well in school you need to look into the patient's ears that is glue ear my friends 
you've known cholesteatoma, you know glue ears. The one you've not heard about is noise-induced hearing loss. Think that noise in 3,000, in the range of 3,000 to 6,000 hertz or 4,000 to 8,000 hertz, noise-induced hearing loss. Noise-induced, and it's usually someone living in the city, near a noisy place. It's usually someone walking in a place where there's always noise, noise-induced hearing loss. Please, please, and please, I decided to give you, in fact, I wanted to give you 16 points. I've just given you 14 points. There's just a lot to do with hearing loss. And if we continue, we will exhaust our time on just hearing loss. 